From the city to rural North America, this is Rural America Live, connecting the people who grow America's food and fiber with those who enjoy it. Call in, let's talk. It's Rural America Live. No matter what kind of business or farm operation you have, a power outage can be disastrous. Tonight on Rural America Live, Cummins, the people you know and trust to bring you powerful, efficient engines, are here to share information about their line of Cummins power generators, your lifeline during a power outage, or maybe when you just need power at a remote location. Good evening and welcome to Rural America Live. I'm your host, Mark Offel. Thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure to welcome a new member to our RFD TV and Rural America Live family. And so it is tonight. For the first time, we welcome Cummins Power Generation. And joining me in studio for the next hour, Dwayne Fisk, his development, uh, business development manager, and Justin Davis, regional sales manager, both from Cummins Power Generation. Their tagline, reliable power for an unreliable world how true true that is welcome to rfd tv and rural america live thanks for having us Thank good to have you here and welcome to our family as we say often uh, those watching and listening know we bring a new member to our family uh, we encourage you to take notes and to find out more about these products and tonight certainly is one when you lose power you're going to want some reliable backup and we have those people with us tonight in fact uh, they're going to hear they're here to tell you more about how generators and specifically how automatic standby generator systems can make a difference for you. We're going to first uh, meet our two guests in more detail. Justin, uh, you told me that Texas is your home originally. It still is. Born and raised in Texas, yeah. Thanks for having us. You bet. Uh, no, I was brought up through the, through the ag world, through the 4-H and FFA systems. Went to school on a rodeo scholarship. So uh, ag is my background. Ag is my love. Uh, started with Cummins about 10 years ago. This is 10 years with the company. Well, great. Started in the RV commercial line and then uh, worked my way up to uh, cover Texas and Oklahoma for regional sales. Mm -hmm. um, and tell me about your experience in, in, in what I'm going to call power generation. I've actually been, uh, since the infancy of this program started, um, we've developed this new product that goes into residential and light commercial. Uh, been with this program for about four years now. Mm -hmm. And you know, people may say, I didn't know Cummins was in the ag, quote, the ag business. And, and that's why we're here tonight, because this is kind of an introduction. We really thank you for trusting RFD TV and Rural America Live to really introduce these products to rural America and the ag community. Am I right? Absolutely. Most people know us as just the Dodge truck engine, and we're so much more than that. So yeah, that's good. what we're here to do. Good to have you here. Absolutely. Dwayne, uh, we had a great conversation as well, kind of a Minnesota-Wisconsin background. Thank you, Mark. Uh, yeah, I was born and raised at, uh, on the north end of the uh, continent and, and uh, uh, have got a 40-year career with Onan and then Cummins Power Generation. So uh, my career path has allowed me to be uh, involved in several different disciplines within the company. I started manufacturing, went into engineering, uh, spent some time in service and have uh, been in sales now for uh, almost uh, 20 years, so yeah. I've uh, been around the whole of the uh, activity, and it's it's been a fun time. I've also had a stint with Cummins Marine, which is located in Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, uh, then for a couple years I was outside of the Cummins umbrella. I worked for a company that sold heaters into confinement agriculture, and so I got my uh, my foot into ag market uh, with with uh, hogs and in poultry. Uh, raising confinement right. situations. So those people, uh, there's a lot more, but confinement operations, uh, remote, uh, you know, dr grain dryers, those kind of things where you right. need that power. That's what we're talking about tonight. And in fact, uh, Justin, something we talked about earlier today, you said, Mark, you could probably take almost any day of the week of the year, there's a power outage somewhere. Right now, I mean, just this morning, we had power outages down in Houston, big storms come through. So yeah, there's power outages used to be um, very rare or uncommon, and they're starting to be. Uh, the grid is so unstable now. Population is expanding. Um, we're, we're so much more tied to electricity than we ever have been, and we're starting to lose it more just because of that. Yeah, and Carl, one of your uh, uh, fellow representatives came with you, talked about, Mark, you really, you lose power now, and people's lives just are totally disrupted, how much we depend on electricity, more and more than ever. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, generators are, are, are more of a, they're becoming more of a necessity 
um, than they ever have. Yeah. Been, so. Well, let's get started here. Dwayne, uh, tell us more about the Cummins power generation itself. Well, I think a lot of people are familiar with Cummins because of, as Justin mentioned, the, the Ram pickup and, and that mm -hmm. uh, having the Cummins engine there, it's known for its, its uh, durability and towing capability. Uh, Cummins builds engines from uh, uh, small to large, and uh, we've had uh, uh, just a new engine that's been developed here recently. It's a ISV 5.0. It's a V8 diesel, which will actually extend our uh, uh, into our different markets for us, into mm -hmm. motorhomes and, and into uh, light duty pickup truck. We've been in business for over 90 years. We've had uh, clean, efficient, dependable, and durable Cummins engines. They're found in nearly every type of vehicle and uh, equipment on earth. We go from anything from a, uh, uh, a picker to uh, 360 ton mine hauling trucks. They've got Cummins engines in them. Every day, every hour. What did you say there? Uh, I said, uh, yeah, we're providing power every hour, every minute, and every day. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk a little bit about uh, where the power generators actually come from. Well, our headquarters is in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. Uh, Cummins is headquartered in Columbus, Indiana, but our uh, manufacturing facility and uh, corporate headquarters is in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where it started back in the uh, 20s with uh, D.W. Owen and started the company back then. Mm -hmm. um, the Cummins uh, history starts back in 1919 with Clessy Cummins and the Cummins engine, and that started everything off. And so we kind of built on that uh, uh, enterprise, and, and it's been a sound foundation for building what we have today is, is a quality product. You talked about the application of commercial application of these backup for hospitals, but things like, you said the Statue of Liberty, am I, is that right too? That's part uh, of Mount Rushmore? Cummins Power Generation is backup, supplies backup power for the Statue of Liberty for Mount Rushmore and the White House. How about that? So, and I guess as something else you said, uh, Mark, really when it comes right down to it, Cummins Power Generation, we just want to do the right thing for our customers. Right. We've, uh, we've got a long history of uh, uh, striving to do what's the right thing, and we call it integrity. Mm -hmm. uh, we also want to uh, apply the necessary creative ingenuity and make better, faster, and be first in the markets, and we call that innovation. And then third thing is the consistent strive to exceed our expectations. And we call that the delivering superior results. Absolutely. We'll learn more about that. Uh, and hopefully our viewers and listeners will give us a call. We'll be opening our telephone lines later this hour, as we always do, and uh, allow you to visit with Dwayne and Justin, answering or asking questions about an application you might have, a need that you have had or do have right now. They are here to help you out during this hour. Let's talk a little bit about, Justin, uh, our audience has likely heard about portable PTOs. Uh, tell us a little more about standby generators. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we just we were at the World Dairy Expo uh, last week. Mm -hmm. Most most of the customers that we had come by the booth said, "Hey, I fire my tractor up, hook up a PTO, and that's how I supply power." Or I drag a portable out, plug in, you know, all the extension cords and whatnot. What's the difference is the standby application. It's all automatic. You don't have to you know drag heavy machinery out. You don't have to you know worry about fuel or anything like that. And usually during a power outage is not the most the, the best time to be working with electricity because there's water, you know, there's storms and everything. Else. Yeah. So, um, yeah, our, our standby applications, um, it's just, it's, it's simple. You don't, there's yeah. no maintenance to it. It's all automatic. Um, you don't have to bring any of that clunky equipment out. So that's, like you say, uh, when you have an outage, the last thing you need to do is be having to whatever, do go through a whole bunch of processes just to get power up. Absolutely. And then you may have to, you know, temperature or whatever it might be. You have a video, I think, that kind of explains the overview. Absolutely, yeah. I think we can play it right now. Yes, we can. Let's take a look. When voltage falls to less than 85% of nominal or fails entirely, the standby power system automatically begins a startup sequence. First, the transfer switch waits for one second. If utility power has not returned, it sends a signal to start the generator. The generator is at proper operating speed after two seconds. The transfer switch pauses another three seconds before transferring power from the utility to the generator. The sequence of operations from the time of the power outage to when auxiliary power is connected usually occurs in six seconds. This ensures that the generator and transfer switch are only activated when needed. 
Wow, great overview. And it's automatic, uh, I guess, to, to underline for listeners and viewers, you don't have to be home when this for this to kick in when you need it. Totally automatic. So a lot of a lot of our viewers will probably have dogs at the house. So when a power outage goes out, you're going to lose AC, you're going to lose heating in the wintertime. So this is completely automatic. It works even though you're not home. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's seamless. And uh, Justin, to kind of, I'm going to uh, stay with you. Sounds like a simple system. You mentioned the word simple as well. I'll tell a little bit more about uh, things that people should consider when they're looking at a generator. Well, it's uh, in the generator world, you have air cooled and you have liquid cooled. Your air cooled is going to be more of your budgetary kind of uh, lead in. Uh, it goes up to a 20 kW. Mm -hmm. uh, the liquid cool is going to go all the way up um, actually to, to several kW. Um, so as far as like really specifically picking out the right product, uh, you need to you need to know what your power loads are. You need to know what fuel type you're gonna you're gonna pick out. Um, yeah, and there's a picture of our. That's actually one of our latest. That's the air cooled unit okay. uh, that our viewers are looking at now. So it's really it all depends on um, you know what their what their loads are, what their budget is, um, and where they can physically install it. And also fuel type is very important. Exactly. Yeah, there's like three, I guess, three basic considerations. Uh, if we go through those, maybe one at a time for mm -hmm. our listeners and viewers, if you would. Okay. So, yeah, the first, the first is fuel. Um, usually on a, on a ag operation, there's diesel. Diesel right. readily available. So we have diesel power. We have natural gas power, which the diesel's on the screen right now. All right. Um, and then we have LP power as well. The second consideration, I guess, what uh, type of application and the, the loads you want to back up, is that well That's going to be your load. So, if you know, if you have a big hog operation or whatnot and you're running uh, more motor loads, you're going to need a larger generator. Um, if it's just for the residents, then you can, you can probably go with a smaller one. Mm -hmm. But probably most of our, our uh, audience is going to need larger ones. Right. And you say there were th uh, three different things to consider. What's, what's that third level? Yes, it's location. Um, there, there's a lot of regulations out there on where specifically you can put the generator. There's fire codes, there's EPA regulations and everything. So that's something that you really need to get with the professional uh, installer and he can he can go over all that with you. Yeah, you know, something we talked about and and I think it's really important maybe not to gloss over it. There are there are EPA regulations just like we know about the tier 4, tier 4 3, tier 4 emissions for for engines. Uh, you're the same under the same guidelines here if it's a portable generator, am I right? Standby. Yeah, yeah. standby. Stand yeah. yeah, right. If if the Everything that we build is going to be compliant with EPA. We're, we're not going to sell anything that's not compliant. Exactly. And so uh, we do have different regulations for, for our product that is mounted on a trailer. That uh, would be more of a rental type that would be hauled around from site to site. Then there is for a standby generator that would be bolted in place, such as Justin was talking okay. about. Okay. Dwayne, I'm going to stay with you and talk a little bit about the different uh, kilowatt ranges and sizes that we're going to be talking about that might uh, work for our viewers and listeners. One of the fun things to talk about is the size of generator that Cummins Power Generation builds. I'll bet. Uh, we start off at 2,500 watts, which is just enough to start an air conditioner in an RV. And we go up to uh, 3.5 megawatts. That's 3.5 million watts. That's uh, enough to power a city in, in, in lights. Oh, wow, yeah. So uh, in, in the egg market, we look mainly at the diesel product, although that, that could be a propane or natural gas. But uh, a lot of the egg market is going to be looking for a diesel product. And we start off at 10 kilowatt there. And that would be for a small operation, like Justin said, with just a few loads on it. But mm -hmm. once you get into something that's got a lot of motor starting, you've got some pumps that you're working on. Uh, of course, you've got a lot of heating, usually for a, for a, a situation. So we'll build uh, up to 500 kilowatt, larger if they need it. But normally in, in the egg market, we're looking from about 10 kilowatt to 500 kilowatt. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we've got the switch gear to help apply that power in, into the business. And again, the fuel, it could be uh, LP, natural gas, or diesel. Am I correct there? Yeah, and in, in the LP natural gas side, we start off at uh, 20 kilowatt in the uh, uh, light commercial loads, and then we go up to 125 kilowatt. And again, that's something that can be, be operated on either propane or on natural gas. Mm -hmm. Are there other items that we would want to consider for uh, people that went on taking notes here tonight, uh, not only the sizes and the ranges, but what else might there be? Well, there's, there's the transfer switch, obviously, that uh, actually uh, comes into play when you're taking the power from the generator and applying it to your 
to your facility. Mm -hmm. About so uh, accessories, maybe maybe that's a better way to kind of put some of the accessories that we have, and in, 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 uh, we we make a lot of accessories to make this installation. And in, in the, the the word simple was thrown out earlier. Uh, for us, it seems simple. For a new for a person who's not familiar with it might not think that's so simple but we do make accessories available so that the contractor the installer can install this uh, one of the accessories that that we have just introduced is called the power command 500 it's actually a uh, there's a, a picture of it on the screen there it's actually uh, wireless and it allows you to monitor the generator and the transfer switch and what's going on at the facility when you're away, when the power goes out and the generator comes on, it can send you a text message or an email message wow. and let you know what's going on. It's uh, also available for helping us to do some remote troubleshooting. So if there were a problem, we can actually look at what's going on on that generator just by going through that module. Yeah. We're giving you a lot of information here in a short time, and we know you're taking notes and going to have questions. Wow, uh, how do I know what's right for me? Uh, let me just ask you, Justin, if someone listening so far taking notes, how do they know what size might work for them? Uh, as far as size, uh, you know, we, we really want to suggest that you go with one of the Cummins partners. Uh, we've hand-selected some uh, very good partners out there that can install uh, the generators, but you can go to, get your pens ready, <laughs> www dot now dot cummins dot com backslash ag so everybody go to that site right now and uh, they can they can simply type in their zip code and it'll pull up uh, probably three or four different uh, installers in their area mm -hmm. and you call them partners and indeed they are these are hand selected and I believe I was talking to you at dinner time there's not a whole lot of areas in the country where there's not going to be someone fairly close by we have relatively about 500 partners and uh, that's been my main focus in the last uh, about two years is to go out and, and partner up so that the end user gets the best quality experience possible. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, wondering what size, if, if you say you have a confinement operation, maybe a 100 sow farrowing unit, just throwing out a number here for you, uh, your partner would be able to, to walk through what the other uh, requirements might be and, and, and offer a generator that was going to work for that operation? Yeah, there's a process that you have to go through, and, and to get an expert out there is very highly recommended. There's a lot of guys that try to do it themselves, and, and it's just, it, it turns into a disaster. Yeah. So we, we really recommend that. The word partner really comes in keen, Mark, on the fact that we offer training to our partners so that they understand our product and understand how we've got it designed for the install. Mm -hmm. But we rely on them to know local codes and requirements in that local area. Uh, and the codes change all across the nation. Uh, you can't do in New York City what you can do in, in Oklahoma and vice versa. So we rely on them. They are truly partners. We train them. We equip them. We give them the information that we have about product. But then we rely on them to actually learn about their local areas and about the codes and regulations that yeah. they have to abide by to do a safe installation. You know, we're going to take a break here in a minute, but uh, earlier we talked about the benefits of in installed generators over portables. Maybe talk a little bit more, Justin, about some of those benefits, if you would kind of uh, uh, retrace those for us. Absolutely, yeah. The, specifically, the, the PTO. You've got to drag the tractor out, you've got to crank the tractor, you've got to hook the PTO up to it, and you've got to drag all the power cords out and hook them up. You know, last time I checked, tractors were meant to plow fields, not to, not to, you know, create. And they got to keep running. Too. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to hear that. Ours is, ours is, you know, within seconds, you're back up and running, and it's a quiet, um, fully automated system uh, with very, very little maintenance on it. Uh, as far as on the portable aspect of it, uh, with the with the poor fuel that we have now, the ethanol fuel, uh, it, it it has a very low shelf life. So normally, I know a lot of times during uh, during the hurricane season down there where I'm from people haven't used their portables in a year. Uh, a storm comes through, they pull it out and they try to crank it and it won't run. Mm. Um, so it's just, it's, it's a clunky operation uh, where ours is, is permanently installed, fully automatic, very low maintenance once a year. I think the automatic goes a little bit farther than just coming on when the power goes out. We also exercise it through an automatic means as well so that you don't have to worry about the fuel being uh, stale in the, in the uh, unit. The exercise gets uh, the unit and the transfer switch, the whole system is ready to go and so that you know that when the power does go out and if you are away and you rely on that automatic starting, it's exercise and it's ready to go. Very good.
All right, we have lots more to talk about. Just getting a good start, our friends here from Cummins Power Generation here and our new name on our RFD TV and Rural America Live family. We're going to be opening our telephone lines here as we go to break and look forward to hearing from you as we work through the remainder of this hour. As always, you're an important part of each and every program. Toll-free lines open now, 877-731-6733. Again, it's toll-free, 877-731-6733. Or if you'd like to go online and type in your question, as you know, simply you can go to our website, rfdtv.com slash live, and type in your question. We're going to talk more about these uh, generators and installation. A lot more to talk about and your telephone calls. More from Cummins Power Generation. We continue right after this. See the legends of rodeo competing against future stars and current heroes at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas on March 1st, 2015. The American, presented by Polaris Ranger. This is the largest gathering of rodeo stars past and present in one location. You have to see them for yourself. Get your tickets today by calling 800-745-3000 or go to Ticketmaster.com. Cummins Generators protect our national treasures. For almost a century, Cummins has earned a reputation for quality and reliability. They can protect your treasures too. Cummins, the standby generator you can trust to protect your home, your family, your way of life. Henry Repeating Arms is a family-owned business. Henry is proud to offer the Farmer's Edition Tribute Rifle to honor the men, women, and families who devote their lives to feeding the world. On the buttstock, we've got a classic American barn with American flag, silo, tractor, and it's hand-painted. On the receiver, there's an American farmer feeding the world inscription with some agricultural elements and touches. And on the left side of the receiver is a farmer working behind his horse-drawn plow with the barn in the background. This is the best rifle I've ever owned. The whole gun is uh, all American made. They're made here or they won't be made at all. Henry, thanks. Call now for a free Henry catalog and decal, including a list of dealers in your area so you can own your own piece of American history. Call or log on now. Henry! And welcome back to Rural America Live. Our friends and new partners to RFD-TV and Rural America Live, Cummins Power Generation. We look forward to hearing from you. We know a lot of applications, as Justin mentioned, there's power outages almost every day. There are right now as we sit here and speak to you tonight. 877-731-6733. Toll-free lines are open right now. 877-731-6733. We're going to get to those calls in a moment. Justin, you mentioned the diesel product. Uh, for application in a, uh, requiring a backup power. What about natural gas, uh, someone who would uh, choose diesel over natural gas or LP? Your thoughts there? A lot of, it, a lot of its location. Um, on most agriculture applications, you have diesel readily available. So that would be the primary choice would be a diesel generator because you have fuel readily available. Mm -hmm. If you have natural gas, you have an endless supply of fuel. Uh, which most rural areas don't have natural gas, you know, so you'll have propane. So there, that's that's another uh, step in the whole process of picking out the generator. All right, very good. I think we have a caller on the line here. Again, lines are open for you asking questions, how we can maybe help you tonight. This is Dean from New York. Dean, welcome. Hey, guys, how are you doing? Yeah, just fine. Thanks for the call. Good. Hey, I got to know, where did he get that hat at? <laughs> it's a Texas thing, actually. All right. Is that a 10 gallon hat? Uh, no, it's only two gallons. So. Two gallons, yeah. all right. Do you have That's a question? Good. Do you have a question, Dean? No. All not right. Really. Thanks for the call. <laughs> very good. Uh, before we go on, I want to talk about their New York State. Uh, one of many areas where they get a lot of storms up there, the wintertime, Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota as well. Maybe uh, talk a little bit about, again, how, how do we know if it's for maybe just for uh, someone in their, in their farm home, mm -hmm. which one of you would want to just kind of talk about some of the things to consider if you're in New York or wherever you might be in, in, a, in a generator that would work just for your home, maybe a, a shop nearby. First thing I want to say, Mark, is the best time to install a generator 
is when the sun's out and the weather's real nice. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it, it never seems to amaze me, and I've been in this business, like I said, for over 40 years. Whenever a storm hits, the phone starts ringing immediately thereafter, and then there's always a backup to get them installed. Um, for, a, for a home, for a modest size home, we build a couple small air-cooled units, 13 kilowatt, 20 kilowatt. Uh, and again, they're just like what we've been talking about for the bigs, it's fully automatic. Uh, they've got the same uh, uh, transfer switch, take the power from the generator. The transfer switch and the generator together monitor the utility, and when the utility drops, the transfer switch takes care, sends a signal, starts the generator, switches it over, it's all automatic. Uh, so we do a lot of things for our residents, for the farm home, like we do for the facility that, that uh, is, is raising uh, livestock or w w whatever the uses are there. Um, and, and these, these uh, units are air-cooled as opposed to what we were talking about earlier, our liquid-cooled engine. So essentially you're taking a, an engine that would be used in a subtype of a, a golf course maintenance equipment, small V-twin air-cooled, and that's what we use for a home standby system. Whereas when you get into the larger needs, larger kilowatt output, then we're getting into more of an automotive system. In fact, the engine that we use in, in our new Connect series is uh, got a fully uh, controlled electronic closed loop system, so it's just like an automotive engine mm -hmm. in a generator. And again, that, that helps us meet EPA. We're compliant with EPA, and it, it uh, satisfies the need to be automatic too. You don't have to be there, any adjustments. Wow, that's a lot of peace of mind right there. You know, yes. My daughter's in the heating and air, and you said something that just hits home. She said, Dad, when the temperature goes to 104, the phone rings and the furnace, the air conditioner doesn't work. When it goes to minus 10, the phone rings because the furnace isn't working. Yeah. So the best time is when the sun's out and the weather's good. They have a couple of callers here we want to go to and see what's on their minds, how we may be able to help them tonight. This is Bob from Illinois. Hi, Bob. <laughs> how you doing? Just fine. Go ahead. Okay, I uh, just want to concern. We live on a farm here, but we have another house in the town of Oakville, Illinois, and I love RFD -T RFD TV. But my main concern is uh, well, she's thinking about getting a generator to go ahead and uh, put it in her house. Uh, the, we live out in the farm. We know that gas don't have the octane anymore. We know that diesels could sometimes gel up, gel up in the winter time. Hmm. But uh, they're on natural gas over there. Is there a way we could recommend to go ahead and run our house to run the air conditioning and heating and maybe their average neighbors plug into it? Well, well, that's a couple of questions there. You can start somewhere, whoever wants to take that one. <laughs> well, if, if you have natural gas, that's, that's going to be the best choice because it's an endless supply of fuel. Diesel you have to fill up and also propane you have to fill up. So thanks for, thanks for the call. So, yeah, I'm not really sure what the exact question was well, if you could, could he, I mean, I think he wants to power the whole house, if I understood him. We, thanks for the call. Uh, Bob is gone. Uh, you know, air conditioning and everything with a generator with natural gas. Yeah. We can, yeah. we, we, sorry, we can, we can run the, these small generators on natural gas, and, and that would supply power to the home. So however he's heating or cooling it now, running off electricity, it's going to be coming off of, of the generator that's running off natural gas. The only time that natural gas becomes a... Uh, a liability rather than an asset is if you've got seismic situations, if you get into an earthquake. And then you can get into a situation where the natural gas system will be shut uh -huh. off. But mm -hmm. that's separate areas in the country. I mean, that doesn't affect everywhere. But uh, like Justin said, with diesel fuel, if you're used to it, know that in the wintertime it gels and you've got to put some additives in it to keep it fresh. And you've got to make sure that that, that uh, quantity of fuel that you've got in the storage tank uh, remains fresh, so you've got to you, you've got to pay attention to it. You can't forget about it. With natural gas, again, it's a completely sealed fuel, never sees the ambient, so it's the the easiest. And, and like Justin said, there's an endless pot of fuel behind that. Propane's also a sealed fuel, but you still have to re remind yourself that uh, you got to get the propane truck out to fill up your tank if you've got an extended run. Yeah. You know, I'm a, he, his last question is something to do with you know sh a neighbor sharing. I'm not sure. Is there a distance? Type of thing, or is that something you just you, you sort of discourage? We act, putting up multiple multiple sites on our air cooled uh, units. We actually have a uh, an optional outlet that mounts right on the generator, so that they can the neighbors can plug into the generator and run a cord across. And there, you've got to make sure that you've got a cord with wire size that will carry the loads that you're trying to carry. But we actually make a provision for that, so that. Uh, 
the neighbors can can uh, tap in off of your uh, your home generator. And your partners, though, would they, your folks around the country would be able to help out absolutely, absolutely in that absolutely. regard. Absolutely. That's good. Go to now dot Cummins dot com backslash ag and find your find a, a, a an expert. Very good. And there again, uh, Justin makes a good point. Now dot Cummins dot com slash ag as we'll be showing that uh, but for those of you listening on the radio uh, write that down use it often and we hope that uh, you can uh, get some great uh, help from that website and find someone a partner near you we're going to go from illinois to texas george welcome to our program how you doing hey thanks for hello, the call george. hi george down in texas hey, hello texas <laughs> yeah go texas i just wanted to give a comment a shout out to our to our, our friend mr justin out there i can tell you personally from an operation standpoint i own a residential service electric company here in san antonio and we have a lot of choices when it comes to generators and who are the companies we decide to partner up with and i can tell you i've never met a most more professional uh company than Cummins. i've personally visited the manufacturing facility out in Minneapolis, and I can tell you I've never said a, a more dedicated group of individuals. Uh, just amazing to me. Anytime I need support in the field, fantastic. Just a wonderful group of people, and I'm uh, happy to be aligned with those guys. We install their generators, uh, you know, on a, on a, almost on a, on a monthly basis, and uh, to this day, I've been with them two years now. We haven't had one issue, one failure with any, any bit of any of the equipment that we've installed. So I just want to give a shout out to you guys and uh, hopefully it uh, helped your customers know that uh, we're all there standing behind you all and we, we love to have, have the ability to do business with you. Thank you. Wow. Thanks, George. I'll give you your $20 when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> Very Thanks, good. George. You know, uh, before we get another call or go on, it, you, he, he's an electric contractor, is that what he said? He is, he's in San Antonio area. Yeah, yeah uh, but that's, a, that's a, a large part, not only individuals and, and people that are have farm operations, ranches, whatever it might be, but people that are listening or watching and have businesses, electric contractors, uh, they would be obviously prime uh, candidates for you to do business with. Absolutely. We see it more and more. The, the, the grid is not expanding. Uh, as quickly as the need and the requirements for power. Uh, most of the time, you're, you know, if your power goes out, there's loss of profit, there's loss of revenue yeah. um, in an ag situation or a business operation as well. So, um, and we're starting to see it more and more. All right, thanks for that call from Texas. We go from Texas to Missouri, and this is Kevin. Kevin from the Show Me State. Hi, Kevin. Hey, how are you guys yeah, doing? Thanks for the call. Hey, go ahead. Hey, Kevin. My question's on uh, PTO generators. We used them in the past and have had some problems with the power quality. What's the quality like on your all standby generators? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, with nowadays, the sensitivity of electrical components in, in any kind of electrical system, um, power quality is a very, very good question. PTO generators uh, requires a certain RPM from the tractor. It's got to be right for the sine wave of the electricity to be, to be proper. So, yeah, there's a lot of what we call dirty electricity coming out of PTOs. Mm. Um, so, yeah, very good question. Very good. Thanks for the call. And as Kevin leaves us, means a line open for you. Our telephone lines toll free. Open now for you. 877-731-6733. 877-731-6733. And as we wait for the next caller, Dwayne, over to you. Uh, Cummins Power Generation recently introduced a new line of uh, diesel and uh, natural gas and LP gas. LP. We've got, uh, we call it the Connect Series. Okay. Uh, and we've got two different versions. We've got a Quiet Connect and we've got a Power Connect. The Quiet Connect goes from 22 kilowatt up to 40 kilowatt and it is, as the name implies, it's quiet. Uh, the Power Connect is something that, uh, uh, um, and that's shown on the screen there, the Power Connect has is, is got a higher power density and it get, goes from 30 kilowatt up to 60 kilowatt. Mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, design was a clean sheet of paper design and we started with uh, uh, an engine that we were able to, uh, again, meet EPA uh, requirements on it. It's got a uh, electronically controlled closed loop fuel system on it. The you connect units for natural gas and LP can be installed anywhere from sea level to 8,000 feet altitude and there's no external ad additions or changes that need to be made to the unit because it's all com it's com controlled by a computer if you will. The housing for the units is a powder coated aluminum and so you don't have to worry about any corrosion issues or mm. uh, clanging or banging. The uh, uh, 
alternator again uh, we've been building alternators for years but this again is a new brushless style alternator for egg use uh, that comes in uh, very handy and it was uh, again a new alternator design that we put into this and so that's kind of what we're doing with the connect series and, and eager to get it into the egg market because it is a very cost effective uh, uh, stable and durable, reliable system. And it sounds like a real key part of your over, overall design was the sound level. Sound level is a big thing at Onan and Cummins Power Generation, and this goes back to when it still was Onan. Uh, that's what they did was build generators that were quiet. Um, currently, we have a uh, facility on our campus in Minneapolis, uh, Acoustic Test Center. Yeah. It's uh, actually, uh, we're still the largest in the world. Wow. And uh, I think we've got a photo of it somewhere that uh, shows that we can run our largest generators in there down to our smallest generators. And we use that facility to uh, identify where the different sound levels were coming from on the unit so that we could design in some sound attenuation. And that's how we came up with the quietest generator on the market. And uh, I should add that, that being fuel efficient is, is great and, and having good power quality that we talked about is great. Uh, quiet is not only great for you, it's great for your neighbors. Uh, everybody enjoys having a quiet generator and, and uh, we installed one up in upstate New York and, and uh, the, the uh, owner of that site came and told us, he said, uh, we, had, uh, we had a party in the neighborhood and I was telling people that I had a generator and nobody would believe me because they couldn't hear it run. Uh -huh. So that's one of the key things that we do is we make things quiet and we use our acoustical test center in, in getting that. Uh, the other thing that we do is when we uh, uh, publish a sound level rating, we're taking an average of the entire circumference of the, that operating unit. Uh, some of our competitors take a look at the quietest spot around their generator and that's what they publish. Uh, we don't do that. We take a look at the average of, of the noise coming from that unit. Mm -hmm. Because your neighbors don't just stand or you don't just stand next to the closest part of the generator. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the sound that's coming And that's something you don't party. appreciate until you don't have it, until the, the sound isn't there anymore. I think you have a video that you brought that kind of explains and shows the testing that goes on. Can we take a look at that? We do, yeah, great. Yeah, let's, let's take a look. It up. The Acoustical Testing Center is just the place for rigorous comparison tests. So we put the Connect series up against a comparable model from a leading competitor. The test setup was the same for each generator. Eight microphones at seven meters distance in 45 degree increments around the unit. Each unit was running at 100% load. Let's listen to the Cummins Power Connect model with the level two sound kit. Now here's the model from competitor X. Let's hear the Power Connect model once again. The Power Connect model with the Level 2 sound kit averaged 4 decibels quieter than the competitor at full load operation. A standard Power Connect configuration was 2 decibels quieter. The next test pits a 40 kilowatt Quiet Connect model against a comparable unit from a different competitor. Both models are rated at 38 to 40 kilowatts and were running at 100% load. First, Listen to the Cummins Quiet Connect model with a level 2 sound kit. Now, here's the competitor Y model. Let's hear the Quiet Connect model again. The Cummins Quiet Connect model with the Level 2 sound kit 
was a full six decibels quieter than the competitor at 100% load. A standard configuration Quiet Connect model was four decibels quieter. Hearing is believing. Reliable power for an unreliable world. That is, I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Uh, again, that's a great description, uh, Dwayne. Appreciate that. We have a couple of callers who have called us during that. We'll see what's on their minds. First, we're going to go to Florida. John, thanks for calling and thanks for waiting. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Yeah, my question is, I have a 2,000 square foot house with natural gas. Would the 20 kW generator run my house? That's a, that's a loaded question, you know, what's in your house? So it's more of <laughs> your power load. Uh, m a lot of people come to us and say, you know, we have X amount for square footage. Uh, it's more, especially down in Florida, you're talking about your AC loads, uh, you're talking about your appliance loads. Uh, if you have pool equipment, that plays a factor. So it's not so much your square footage as it is your power load. But going back to that, our 20 kW air-cooled will run approximately about 80 percent of the houses built in America. So I hope that answers your question. I think, too, just to add a little bit onto that, uh, the control module on our air-cooled unit actually has two circuits on it for load shedding. So we could, uh, and again, getting, your, getting our local partner in there to take a look at your situation, uh, we can actually put some loads onto these load shed circuits so that if the load from the home you've got an air conditioner kicks on, the microwave comes on, if you've got a water heater or something like that that comes on, if the load gets too high, then this control will actually take those loads off of the system until the load on the generator goes back down and then it'll bring those back online. So we can actually run a home that might normally require a 30 kilowatt generator with our, our RS-20A because of the fact that we have these two circuits that will actually shed some of that excess load. Very good. And again, they can go online to our the website. That's the main area and the main way to get in touch with the partner near you, John, in Florida there. Let's put that website up there. Uh, again, very simple to say now.cummins.com slash ag. Sounds like a lot, but it really is okay. Mm. Uh, write that down and keep that handy. That website will have the uh, dealer, the partner near you, John, and anyone else listening or watching, you'll be able to put in your zip code and locate someone very near you. Would you say, uh, Dwayne, within an hour's drive or a little, that's the, that's we, the, we, that's we like what to you're have, trying to get. We like to have partners within an hour's drive in case there is a problem, we can get somebody out and take care of that because usually the problem only shows itself when there's an emergency mm. and, and so that's what right. we're shooting for. All right. Certainly. We're going to stay with John, but we're going to go from Florida to Michigan. John from Michigan, thank you for calling. Yeah, I was wondering, <clears throat> I've heard people talk that they don't want to get these generator sets because they can't maintain them. Do you guys sell a main maintenance program with these? Ah, that's a very good question. Actually, um, John, thanks for calling in. Yeah. The maintenance is actually very low. It's usually about once a year. Um, it's fluids change, but yes, the most of our partners offer some sort of maintenance agreement. So yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. And it's another good reason to recommend them finding their local partner, punch in their zip code, and yeah. they'll find out uh, not just one, but they'll probably find two or three or four that are in that area. And, and almost all of our partners are, are set up to do the preventive maintenance. Mm -hmm. But that's a great thing about this, this whole system is the actual user doesn't have to interact with it that much. So it's really, it's a once a year maintenance. Um, it, it exercises automatically, switches over automatically. Um, and you do a yearly maintenance, so it's 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 pretty seamless. And part of that is installation, the way it's installed Absolutely. by your professionals. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But before then, I want before uh, we move on, I want you, Justin, to talk about the new products. We talked about some of the new products of the diesel and LP, new diesel products, I should say, that you want to cover. Well, we're we're you know we're a diesel family. That's how everybody knows us as as uh, as a diesel family. But we started from scratch. Uh, we built brand new units from 10 kW all the way up to uh, uh, 40 kW. Wow. Uh, with, you know, our one, yeah, there's some pictures of it right there. 1.7 liters all the way up to the new Cummins uh, four, uh, four cylinder, uh, 3.3 G5 engine, mm -hmm. which actually that 3.3 has been used in thousands of um, applications in the past. Uh, ag, uh, industrial, uh, there, there's several, uh, Applications, uh, absolutely. Yeah. If in, we go into that, yeah, yep. right. It's one of the. Uh, I, I believe it still is the lowest warranty engine that Cummins has. So it's been a very, very dependable and reliable engine, and we've applied that in our new diesel series 
partnering up with a new control, with a new alternator, with a new housing. So we've got a, we think that we've got a real winner here. And that's available right now? Do any of our partners would have that? That's, that's correct. That's and, and, you know, that's when, uh, you know, we, we come from the industrial world. We know, we know about the uh, tank res regulations. Um, so we offer a variety of tanks from a 24-hour tank um, all the way up to a 96-hour tank. Um, wow. Which that, uh, as far as EPA regulations, that can get hairy. So uh, we're on top of that. Very good. And with that, we're going to take a break. We haven't talked about installation, but uh, we are going to be covering that and taking more of your telephone calls. So let's take our last break. And our telephone lines are open, 877-731-6733. Time's running short. We want to hear from you. Be right back after this. Our friends from Cummins Power Generation. Cummins Generators. Protect our national treasures. For almost a century, Cummins has earned a reputation for quality and reliability. They can protect your treasures too. Cummins, the standby generator you can trust to protect your home, your family, your way of life. I think one of the greatest joys of being a mother, and now a grandmother, is watching your kids grow up and capturing those memories. But when I was overweight, I realized I was always the one taking the pictures because, well, pictures, they don't lie. I'm Marie, and I lost 50 pounds on Nutrisystem. With Nutrisystem's Little Black Dress Kit, now you can lose weight fast. Lose five pounds in your first week or your money back, guaranteed. And now I'm back in the pictures. Hey, I'm even taking selfies. Order your 28-day My Way plan right now, including Little Black Dress Kit. Get one week of specially selected meals, plus one week of energizing shakes free, one week of craving crusher shakes free, plus start slimming your belly. We've all had those before pictures, but trust me, it's the after pictures that feel the very best. Call 855-355-SIZE and lose your first five pounds fast. Yamaha Viking and introducing the all-new Viking 6. The hardest working, most off-road capable side-by-sides in America. Built for the hardest working people on earth. You. Welcome back to Rural America Live. I'm Mark Offel, joining the studio tonight by our friends from Cummins Power Generation, a new partner here, a new name. If you've not heard them before, there's a reason. that They're getting into the ag community, the, the agricultural industry, and proud to be there and uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Our lines are open. We're going to be taking as many phone calls as we can. We promised to talk about installation, Justin, so let's kind of run through that. Uh, what should a customer expect when they get one of these systems, whether whatever size it is, the installation process? Well, it's about a two- to five-day process, so it is, it is a mini-construction site yeah. so there'll be equipment there there'll be guys working uh, there'll be you know the generator will come in and then also the transfer switch so you have two pieces of equipment uh, there'll be plumbing lines that will need to be run so yeah be, be prepared for a um, you know a small construction site what's the, what should the customer basically I want to say what should they expect uh, I guess a little bit of digging and they're absolutely gonna have to yeah there's gonna be there's gonna be mud um, there's gonna be guys digging trenches uh, so they'll install a transfer switch on side of the house which goes in between your meter and the generator, which decides whether it goes uh, utility power or generator power. Um, and then they'll pour a concrete slab. Uh, they'll run the plumbing lines from whatever fuel type that there is, um, and then do all the hookups. So about a two to five day process. If you're gonna be powering two buildings, let's just say, for example, a barn, uh, a dairy barn, and a machine shed, mm -hmm. uh, your dealer, your partner would decide kind of where physically placing that generator? Absolutely, and it's, uh, length of run can play a big difference. You might need to put two, you know, a big one and a small one, or you may need to put one big one. So that's when we really want um, our guys to, to go to the professionals. All right, very good. Let's go to Kentucky, our next call. Try to get as many of these calls in. This is Lee uh, from the Bluegrass State. Hi, Lee. Hello. Go ahead. Hello, Lee. Yeah, I, I live in a subdivision. I have a, a pretty small yard, and I want really to put in about a 20 kilowatt uh, system, but I wanted to see exactly what size tank I need, the smallest tank possible for my backyard. All right. Thank you. 
Okay, yeah, if, uh, if you have natural gas, they can just hook directly onto your natural gas. Um, uh, if not, you will need a, a LP tank. So really the smallest we'd recommend is about 250 gallon tank. Um, it's better to have a 500 gallon tank, but 250 you can get away with um, for minor power outages. And again, a lot of times that depends on how many outages you have and how long in duration they are. Because obviously if you've got a short duration, you can always get some fuel brought out to the site. Uh, but if you're going to have some a lot of long duration outages, then you're going to want to go towards a, a, a larger. Yeah, it's hard. You know, even Kentucky, you wouldn't think would have as many as maybe Texas with the hurricanes or Wisconsin with the snowstorms and Minnesota. But one you know, never knows. You the know? middle of the middle belt there gets a lot of ice storms, and that can create a lot of havoc on, on grid lines. Well, and right. So even though it's not cold. They'll still get some of that ice coming through there, and that can... And those are great problem. questions. Lee, thank you. That, but the thank partner you. can answer those questions. Right. I want a small tank for my right. backyard. Uh, boy, that, that new uh, Quiet, uh, the... What's Quiet it? Connect. Quiet, Quiet Connect. Connect. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like it'll be a great thing for a backyard in a neighborhood. Certainly. Thanks for that. That's Ernie from Utah continuing with our telephone calls. Hi, Ernie. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah. How are you? Good morning. Just fine. How can we help you? I've got. I've already bought a 20 watt generator, and it's a lot of peace of mind, guys. Uh, it, my wife has bone marrow cancer. I've mm. had been in the hospital three weeks in the last four mm. with uh, blood clots, and uh, it's just a, a big peace of mind. I was coming home one day, and I noticed the power pole was down. The power was out, and I was worried about getting in my house because. My wife, like I say, has bone marrow cancer, and it's hard for her to answer the door. I pull up the garage door and hit the button, and up the door went. And uh, I, I just, uh, about an hour and a half, two hours uh, on the generator. But, uh, and then also, uh, I, I, I didn't want to miss, miss RFD TV. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, God so bless anyway, you. Yeah, that's my story, and I, I just, it's just a lot of peace of mind. Uh, uh, God bless you, Ernie, you and, you and your wife as well, and your battle there, and, and uh, glad that RFD TV is here, and the generator is here. Those are stories, but you never get tired of hearing those, do you? That's right. I, I hear them daily. I mean, yeah. uh, talk about entry gates. You know, entry gates run off of electricity. Uh, power goes out, you can't get into your farm or your ranch. Um, uh -huh. So there's 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 just a vast array of, you know, we're so tied to electricity What now. about, yeah, sump pumps? Absolutely. Water wells, uh, you name it. Um, even data backup centers for uh, like a horse facility, a breeding facility as well. So sure. there's, there's a plethora. All right. Just a couple of minutes left here. Let's go to New York. Steve, I believe you are next. And uh, welcome to our program, Steve. Well, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, I got a question for you. Yep. Go ahead. You're on. Okay. I got a question for you. I've got a, uh, I got a small Christmas tree farm and I've got a 12,000 uh, what uh, system, and I have a solar backup for that. Oh. And I want to know if uh, solar is compatible with your units. So we get that a lot in South Texas, especially. People want to do solar integrated with a generator backup. Solar okay. is just very unreliable, um, it's more expensive. Uh, but yes, you can integrate it. Um, usually, a lot of times, the, the guys want to run the generator and charge the batteries um, that the solar system. So yes, you can integrate the systems, but the most reliable um, power source is going to be a generator, okay. not solar. This is Jim from Indiana. Might be our last call. We have things to wrap up here, but Jim, we certainly want to take care of your question tonight, so welcome. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Jim. I'm in Indiana, northern Indiana, and we have electric heat uh, in the winter, air conditioning in the summer. We live in a country we cannot get natural gas or anything, and uh, we also have to pump our own water. Uh, water. What si and we have a 200 amp service entrance that I know. What size unit would I need to put in? with propane. I like to run it on propane. I understand it's propane will last almost forever. Is that correct? And what size? Propane's in a, in a sealed tank and it never uh, comes in uh, in touch with ambient. So yeah, propane is a good situation for fuel that doesn't uh, deteriorate. Uh, from what you said, I think that, that uh, our RS-28 probably is going to provide enough power um, and again, we've got load shed capability on that so that uh, there might be some loads that could be disconnected 
uh, for a brief amount of time when you're running on the generator. But I, I, from what I heard, I think that the RS20 is probably going to yep. be a, a suitable uh, package for you. And as far as the 200 amp, yes, we have 200 amp uh, transfer switches. It's not a problem. Uh, fully automatic. Not a problem at all. So the next step is to reach out to his partner in that area. Punch a zip code in and find who's in his local area, and we can go from there. Very good. And we'll be putting up that website again before we're done, and that's going to be not too long. Real quick before we start to wrap things up, uh, Justin, about automatic standby generator systems. One question, uh, why is an automatic standby generator system important to a farm or ranch owner? It's peace of mind. You know, it's, it's, it's basically an insurance policy. We're hoping the power will never go out. But we're planning for the future. I mean, that's as simple as you can as you can do it. But it's, it's peace of mind. Very good. Yeah, and we had a couple of callers that alluded to peace of mind. So our time is up. We have want to leave, as those of your regular viewers and listeners know, ample time for all of our guests to uh, to provide uh, closing thoughts and lots of things to talk about tonight. Uh, Dwayne Visk, I want to start with you. Great to have you here, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and great information. Your closing thoughts. From up on the tundra, yeah, I'm appreciative of the nice warm weather we have here in Nashville. <laughs> uh, uh, it's always nicer than that. Um, no, I, I appreciate the, the questions that came in. I thought that we had some uh, uh, good questions there, and, and we really appreciate being here and being able to talk to your audience. Uh, obviously, we've learned uh, uh, about the, your audience, and, and uh, their, uh, they uh, enjoy your show, and it's, uh, it's a great show, and, and we enjoy that. I think that um, uh, our products that we presented today, uh, like Justin said, that's peace of mind, it's security, it's, it's that reliability and durability that we bring to the marketplace. And so we're just happy that we could, and hopefully we've shared enough so that people are understand more about it and, and the generator isn't a black hole, but it's something that they can uh, feel a lot more comfortable you with. You know, I think you might have said real quick, it's something about, uh, Mark, this kind of tracks along, maybe it was Justin, I'm not sure, the air conditioning units. Used to be, had everybody had window air conditionings and then it evolved into central air. Mm -hmm. People have portable generators evolving now into what we've talked about here for the last hour. Right, right. Yeah, home standbys are here to stay. I mean, they, they, now I did bring that up. Uh, but yeah, that was, was back in Dwayne's era, though. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't in my era. But yeah, it's, I mean, we're here to stay. Uh, it's, it's following the same uh, path as uh, everybody that switched from uh, window units onto to central air. So yeah, it's, it's here to stay. Uh, anybody, you know, if you, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So, you know, let's do it Let's do it on the forefront of the power outage as opposed to the backside. Yeah, so uh, any other additional closing thoughts? About a minute to go here for you to wrap things up for us. I'm just uh, I'm, glad to, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be a part of RFD. I'm, I'm glad to be a part of the agricultural community. That's my home. Um, and, and really appreciate, you know, y'all's programming. Uh, and we're really excited to be partners with you guys. And, uh, you know, just want to move some product, but, uh, but also be engaged in a community that, that uh, strives on integrity. Um, and, you know, you do what you say. Very good. Let me, on behalf of Patrick Gotch, our founder, mm -hmm. and Tim Moan, who's uh, taking care of you folks, mm -hmm. welcome to RFD TV and Rural America Live. And we uh, look forward to many more of these. Uh, you guys are just on getting started here now. So Absolutely. Good to see you. And welcome Thank you. again. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can visit now.cummins.com slash ag for more information on Cummins Power Generation and find a partner in your area. We hope it's been useful information. Information. And again, uh, the time to talk to your partner is right now and not when it's too cold or too hot or in the loop.